but we could talk about I would feel more comfortable talking about the racism in games, but I don't feel comfortable saying anything regarding gay people because niggas will splice it out of control. They could That's they could fair, splice, yeah. They could splice your footage, what you said. I could splice you and make you look really bad. I literally could, bro. But we're in I control of this. But no, I get what you're saying. Like, it won't matter because they can splice it does, whatever. It doesn't matter if we're in control. We have the whole audio up. If it's up, you can take a bit. No, yeah, that's take what I just. Bit yeah. And make those two guys. Those two guys are getting run through the ringer right now. The, uh, the Shits and gigs? From London. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. They're no, getting, I saw that. They're getting run through the ringer for a clip of a show that's not even theirs. Was it and the, the Andrew Schultz one or something? Up? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that one. I saw that another one where they were talking about um, they were on another show with these two black chicks, and it was They're about like women in Atlanta. Show. It wasn't even All like he clipped out of context. He hasn't seen no baddies. All yeah, so you've seen what I'm seen talking about. Baddies. But I'm just saying, like they, all, it doesn't take much. No, I know, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't take much. Especially oh yeah, no, books. that's. No, that was my whole thing about like the whole. Books. You. Why there's so many black people and shit, and then like you you're just stuck with that. Like like I was gonna say, like the dude who was a voice actor for Basim, and I think that was the name. No, no, not Basim. Um, the guy from Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, the main character in that, the guy who did the voice of that, and he was also in House of the Dragons. As fuck, it's been off the air for like a month, and I already forgot the names. But the bastard yes. son, oh uh, yeah, right. But the bastard son of the Lord of Tides. I think his name starts with an A. Alan. That dude produced and like and has his own studio or something like that. Produced and developed his own game called Zao. Uh something like that. It's a 2D side scroller based around African mythology. So like before I get to that, I'm saying this, like in, in gaming, most of those like them want to victimize himself. I could say it. White boys, the like the 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 weird ones that want to like victimize themselves in gaming, who are the tourists, the shoobies. They're talking about like, well, then before they were saying like, well, then why don't they go off and make their own shit? Why like in taking instead of taking characters or like franchise or whatever, he does that. He does that, and then all of a sudden his game comes out, and then it just. Well, it's not that it doesn't do well. I don't think they had. He just wanted to make something. And then it just, you know, it sells modestly. And then they're like, oh, yeah, what, like, woke, go, go, woke, go, broke, all this other stuff. And it's like, this was a black guy who made an original idea. That doesn't fit under this at all. They just want to say that shit. That was my whole point of the whole thing. It's just they, they're they looking for anything possible to say, you know, if it ain't white, it ain't right. Basically. Not even that. If it's not white, if it's not white, straight, and whatever, like white, straight man, then it's not right. That's all they're trying to do. Which is like fucked up on my end because it's like, dude, I grew up playing games where it's like straight white males all the other time. Why can't other people get their shit off? I never complained about it. It was just like, it, like they would always say, like, because they would always, like, it would be bullshit. They'd just be like, oh, I mean, well, then, like, why does race matter? Why does the race matter and stuff like that? But then when the race changes from someone who's not white, not straight, and all this other shit, all of a sudden it does matter. What happened? I thought you were saying, I thought you were saying, why, like, why should the race matter and all this other shit? Seems like you're starting to make it matter quite a bit. That's my end of my little thing. I mean, because we, we started this from... <laughs> whole different conversation like just came into this episode hot as fuck i didn't have any topics good morning good morning you are now <laughs> tuned into another episode of it's too early for all that i am your humble host jordan baylor filmmaker animator and all things under the sun i've got coffee in hand excitement in my heart and i'm ready to kick off the day with some fresh hot takes i'm enjoying by none other than the pissed off, ready to explode, pause, Fulton. How are you doing today, my good man? Now, don't come in weak now. Uh-uh, hell no, not after that. <laughs> now, yeah, I mean, I got all I got. All, yeah. all I will say to add to that, let's say it started the pendulum swung in the other direction. I'd be so down for, you know, because, you know, for my, you know, my white brethren and all that, my white cousins and stuff like that, I'd be so for them to also start getting their uh 
you know, representation with games and shit like that. If it was all of a sudden just only, you know, black, Hispanic, well, Hispanic's like a weird one because it's like that's more of like just a language, people that speak a language. But you know what I mean? Uh, black, indigenous, Asian, shit like that. It was just like that just took over and that was like we were the only people being represented. I'd be all for like, OK, let, let's even it out. Let's get some like white people back in. All I'm saying is just let everybody have some shit without trying to like poison the well and shit on everything. Speaking of poison the well and shitting on everything, My law transition. enforcement officials, law enforcement officials confiscated narcotics and more than 1000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant from duty's house in Miami and Los Angeles during a raid earlier this year in March. The narcotics and baby oils were used in his, quote, freak off orgy sessions where he forced women to join. So, you know, Diddy got arrested this today and his bell was denied. What are your what is your take on this? What are you thinking of the diddler? What's your take? The boy's a fiend. <laughs> <laughs> What else is it to say? Like, I mean, it's just... Well, how do you feel about it? I mean, just ever since when they, like, when the allegations were coming out and everybody was, like, making jokes about, like, Diddy Park, because this has been, like, if you have a black, this has been going on for, like, decades. People have always made those fucking jokes. And it was the same thing with, like, the R. Kelly shit. So it's just, like, we make jokes, but, like, people know the shit is true. People don't just make jokes like that without... Well, I mean, like, sometimes people make jokes like that with, like, some shit without some shit, you know, being true. Like, they'll just run with shit. But with that, it was just, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he deserves to die, and I hope he burns in hell. <laughs> like, it's just, I remember I saw, like, That's I was a... already, I was, I was already, like, weirded out. I believe, because, you know, everyone, it should say something that when those allegations came out, no one really was like, no. Like, everybody believed it right away. Just like, Diddy Parties was, Diddy Parties was a thing. People would say that as a joke. And then and then when the video of what he did to Cassie came out, because, like, the allegations, again, like, that she was saying was, like, crazy enough, where she was saying, like, yeah, he would, he would make her um, have sex with people to, like, get deals done and all this other shit. And the you know, the force fellatio and all that other stuff. And then you see the video where he's like kicking her while she's down and shit like that. And I think he would spit on her. That don't even, yeah, just awful, heinous shit. It was just, yeah. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, they caught him and then that's, yeah, that's done. That's what I feel about it. Like that, you, the boy's a fiend. <laughs> he's... All right. I well, love that take. This is my take on, Diddy in the whole thing. You made a great point when you touched on it. You said that the black community has known about these Diddy parties and Diddy fucking over men and women, uh, their rights, their publishing, their records. Like we've known that Diddy will rape you um, on books. And there's been rumblings that he'll physically rape you behind closed doors too. Like that was, so it didn't shock any black person that he's been doing this and he's been moving like this. My take is why is a video from 2018 or what is it? 2016 where he's kicking and beating the brakes off of Cassie. Why is it just coming to the public light? And why is CNN acting like they just broke this story? This is footage that's been sitting on a shelf six plus years, you know, and you can look at it as you can look at it and say, oh, it's just Diddy's time, or you can look at what has actually happened in the past year with Diddy, which is he sued that billionaire and it blew up in his face. The billionaire behind Ciroc and many other companies for discrimination, and it blew up in his goddamn face. He tried to put the weasel back in the box, but obviously the guy that's behind that has opened up hell on that dude's life. And all the people that he's messed over screwed over a coming forth and saying hey now's your time to 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 reap what you sow and it hurts because it's so many beautiful and amazing talented people that he's hurt along the way and i was always a fan like one of my favorite albums in music ever 
is the last train to Paris album. I don't know if you mm. ever heard it. Yes. It's an amazing album. And it's got Danny D. Kane. It's got the girl from Danny D. Kane. Um, Don, Don Richards. Don, Don Richards. Don Richards singing and another uh, chick. And uh, the other chick was on Love and Hip Hop and she was crazy as shit, bro. She made Jocelyn look sane. And I was like, yo, why is she so off the wall? You know, I never seen her like that because the last time I saw her, it was, you know, last train to Paris. And Don just came forward last week and sued Diddy for rape and a bunch of other things, sexual abuse. And it just kind of answers my question on why there wasn't a sequel album. Because this guy's back there. He's not trying to cut records. He's trying to rape women. And it's just awful. And he takes really talented, beautiful people and he rapes them physically, on paper, with publishing. And it's sick. He's a demon and he needs to be put down. And I'm tired of acting like I'm tired of taking half measures with these people. He's a demon. He's a symptom of what the industry is. They all need to be taken out of back and shot. And that's just how I feel. And I'm glad people are finally waking up and not letting people be pieces of crap just because they're talented. If you're a piece of crap, you need to get handled. Man, woman, child, it's disgusting. I, I saw a clip of um, Misty Stone, the, the, the porn star, and she was talking about how she basically found the uh, girl Tiana Trump. Have you seen this clip? Mm -mm. She said she found Tiana Trump in like 16, she was like 15 or 16. Basically in the clip, she basically says that she groomed her to go into pornography. It's disgusting. And the reason why people didn't get mad is because it's a woman. Right. It's the reason why. It's the reason why people didn't get mad is because she's a woman. That's point blank period. You know how bad it is? Bro, I, was, I saw the clip on World Star, and even the men in the World Star comment section said, dude, that's a piece of shit. You know how bad you got to be for the people in World Star to say you're a horrible person? You have right. To I mean, it, it, that's bad. a group of horrible you people with an oven. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they're horrible, unemployed people. But when they go, you're a horrible person, just period, you're a horrible person. And I'm, I'm, I want to see more of these uh, people convicted. I want to see more of these people. They're, they're bell denied. I want to see Russell Simmons' ass. I want to see his ass extradited. I want to see him doing yoga in Rikers. Do yoga in Rikers, nigga. Do that shit in Rikers, nigga. Horrible goddamn people, bro. I'm sick of these rapists. And what did I'm Russell Simmons do? I've heard yoga. shit about Russell Simmons, but I like, but it's always been like, side shit they said him, what he was doing is just like that was just the move it was just rape women just well, i mean yeah like, like a lot of them early 90s era. yeah 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 and it was like a a, a a woman came forward she used to be a music exec they did a whole documentary about it it was on hbo max they did a whole documentary about it she's a music exec she uh a and r she kind of helped find biggie she found biggie she found some other big artists i think she found ll cool j or worked with him or something like that and she was working closely with Def Jam and basically just one day said she was at his apartment playing him some tapes of some artists that she had heard. They locked the door and raped her. And she was just like, I was done with the music industry after that. And, you know, it was just like one of the many stories of people telling stories like that. Yeah. So it's, just, it's not just a singular person. This is many, many people, many people that it's happened to and they just don't even talk about it. You know. Well, that that's why it takes so long to... Because you need, like with the Diddy thing, they need evidence. They need to compile evidence to actually that actually sticks to the guy and actually get witnesses together and victims and stuff like that. And most of these people, it's like isolated incidents wouldn't be the word to use, but it'd just be like the, the, I, the instances are so separated and these victims don't know about each other, so they can't really come together and collaborate in a way. Also because these are powerful people that they're, you know, making allegations Going against. Into. Yeah. So, you know, even with the video thing, like if someone just put that up, then they could risk being sued. Cause you know, maybe someone that represents Diddy can be like, Oh, that's doctor. That's whatever. You know, like, uh, because there won't be at the time there, the victim themselves won't come out and like substantiate the proof of what's happening in the video. So it's all, that shit's always, 
tricky for people. So it, I'm happy to see that. I'm not happy to see because it sucks that it always has to take like such a long line of victims, such a long time. All these they get to they get to get away with horrible shit for so long before it comes to a head. It's the same thing that's happening with uh, Vince McMahon. Oh yeah. You tell me anything that man did, I would believe you. Yeah. <laughs> you said like anything you said, anything you told me that motherfucker did, he did it. I believe. It. Like, I immediately just I believe. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same yeah. way. If you told me, yeah, yeah. If you told me he raped you in a hell in the cell uh on national television, I'd be like, I didn't see that episode, ma'am, but I will show up and testify as a character witness for you <laughs> because yeah. It's Vince McMahon. I believe he did it. I believe, I believe that it. shit. I believe it. Oh, yeah. so I don't know if you've seen it, but the past day, the comedian, online comedian Drewski and his uh, ex-girlfriend Ruby Rose have been going back and forth in the media. They broke so up? Ruby Rose, yeah, they broke up. They dated like two, three weeks. Oh, man, I so, thought she was the one. I know, too. Me, too. So Ruby put out there, she said, and for the record, I never slept with that man. He paid me for PR, not for the P. And he is funny and nice, though. So basically, she just said that Damn. it was a PR relationship. And he's a he basically paid. Maybe she's trying to save face. I don't think she is. Personally, I don't. I can get why she would, you know, a lot. Yeah, because it's like at this point, it's like, something about it's telling me she's not lying. Bro. I, yeah, I would feel like she would because it'd be at this point, people would already assume that you two like ho like hooked up sexually. So why, like, why try to take that away at this point? Yeah, it's a real thing too. You know, you I might, believe it. You know, we date, we date, I date. We get some, we get our clicks up, we get our exposure. People talk about us for a little bit, and then we just go our separate ways, you know? So I know that that PR stuff is real. But what is your take? Do you think she should have kept it close to the vest? Or do you think <laughs> if he paid, you think she should have said he smashed? <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> like he should have paid extra to make sure she said that they... Yeah, I guess. Like, I don't know. Like... Yeah, yeah, because, you know, you got Drewski, he's coming out, and he's basically, like, making a joke of it. He's not really, you know, saying he did or didn't smash. Yeah. But he's making a joke. Because everything's a joke to him. Nothing will stick to him. But right. what are your thoughts? Would you pay for a PR relationship? No. No. I, would, I, 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 don't, I don't see the need to. You wouldn't pay for a Pete Davidson two-week uh, in fling? Entanglement with him, you know how many clicks you can get? Yeah, you don't know how many clicks you could get. I don't know, man. I feel like I could be, <laughs> I feel like I could be like, <laughs> I mean, because I actually like want to do shit that involves talent and skill and like be known for that. So even though I'm like talking to a mic right now, but I mean, like, people see, but yeah, that type of shit, I don't know, like just to be seen, like just to be famous, I don't know. No, to answer your question, no, I wouldn't. No. Yeah, I mean, like, I would, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Just, no, I would be, yeah. <laughs> I don't, because I don't get it. Like, I understand it. But for me personally, I don't get it. Because I would be more, way more into the whole challenge of, like, trying to actually date. You know, actually date her and, like, schmooze her or whatever. And have like a real, like an actual relationship. A PR relationship just seems like, um, I don't know, it just seems lame as fuck to me. <laughs> like, why? Like, why? It's just, you know what I mean? It just, it seems like just, it seems like a movie. It seems like, like middle school, high school bullshit. Like, love don't cost a thing type shit. I'm like, oh, I feel like a fucking loser. Dude, will you be my girlfriend if I pay you? That's crazy you said love don't cost a thing. That is literally the poster he posted and put his face over Nick Cannon. Are you serious? I swear. It was the love don't cost a thing poster. And he put his face over Nick Cannon's body. It was like, like, you know what I mean? Like he was. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Like, that thought wouldn't even come to my mind. <laughs> 
She'd be good. She'd probably be good for that, by the way. If they did like another. If they did a remake, they did a remake. They need to do it with Drewski and him and her. See that. See that. I would respect that it's way more problem. than paying for you it's know paying for a relationship. Put them back in high school. Redo the exact same movie. Yeah, them all in high school. You get yeah. you get fucking paid. It, it boosts your notoriety up, and you get the same buzz as if you as if you paid for the fucking PR relationship. It just costs a little bit more money because you have to produce. No, he's he's cool, with Kevin Hart. He you just get him to produce it. <laughs> get some fucking dude Speaking to like write a, Hart, a whatever script. Speaking of Kevin Hart, um, he closed all four of his Hart House restaurants in the California area. They were a fast vegan food chain, and they closed. I think part of the reason why they closed was because in California, um, they raised the minimum wage to $20 an hour. And he was trying to keep all the food to underneath $8 so that families could come eat there. Mm. So I think that might have played part of it. And then obviously the other part is poor sales because no one's going to close a restaurant that's making money. <laughs> so yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously uh, fast vegan food is not where. I didn't even know you is. had those. Yeah, he had four locations, and all four of them have shut down. I don't know. I feel like, well, this is me being armchair fucking businessman. Like, I know what the fuck is going on. But, I, yeah, you should have just opened one, like, prime location, put everything into that. At least two. Or, like, at the most two. Put uh, everything into those. And I didn't even know he had them. So, like, I guess promote more and then get on the whole... Like, black it the fuck up. Like, get on the whole, like, yeah, this is good for our people. This is good for the community. Um, the, you know, veganism is amazing for us. Get together with, um, I know his name, with Country Wayne, because he's, like, big on veganism. I think he's a oh. vegan or something like that. Cross-promote with that dude. Pay him something, you know, just. Like, there were ways you could have done it. I mean, I think you're right. I agree with that point. I think you go too big too fast. And even though it's Kevin Hart, it's still too big too fast. Yeah. Um, you start with one Especially location. Especially with restaurants. Like, yeah, restaurants is very, very hard business. Doesn't matter how much money you have behind it. You can still very much flop. Yeah. I think I agree with your take on it as getting more influencers through the door, more vegan influencers, and then have one location and make it central. And then make it more of a staple type relation uh, restaurant rather than fast food. So like, like kind of how Bun B does, uh, you know, trill burgers. burgers. Yeah. Very similar to that. Do something like that with with uh, good food, and then slowly expand it out to multiple locations. But you know, hey, I gotta say I'm proud of Kevin Hart for even trying, for even trying to bring um, fast vegan food on a scale like that that's 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 a much bigger risk than i'm doing a chicken joint like yeah i'm doing a burger joint like how easy that would have been for him to do kevin's burgers much respect yeah from from me as well like i, I love respect. that he did yeah, that a lot of respect you tried you tried yeah. and you found you found out that the market is not there it's not there so much respect but you found out so yeah exactly what i meant by like black it up and say like you know Get sort of uh, conspiratorial with it. It's just like, well, I mean, like so much food that they try to the put out. The white man don't exactly. want you to eat good, my brother. Yeah, bring it down Take like a couple of notches. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Push bring it the like there, but bring down down a little bit, like a couple of notches. You know, don't even mention the white man. You don't need to alienate, alienate nah, them. Nah, you Get got some to of them up in out. there. Air him out. Air, air him out and make a white man serve me my sandwich. Air make him out. Make it more of like, you know, the government. You know, or they. No. Hit, hit the they. The white, the, they, the white boys. The white boys. Yeah, but yeah, they don't like us eat well. Are you on the, sh- the audio, the commercials, like, are you on the bus right now? Yes. Turn to your right. Turn to your left. Do you see a white man? Yes. He is the person, is the reason for the, all your problems right now. That white man. Put hands on him. <laughs> I would just be like, turn to your left. Are you at the bus up right now? Turn to your left. Turn to your right. Are they fat as fuck? You want that to be you? You should try out veganism. Go to Kevin's. What, what the fuck were they called? Uh, to the heart house. Heart's house. Yeah, heart's heart 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 house. Heart, heart house? hut. Yeah, it's heart house. 
Heart House. Heart Hut. Oh, Heart, Heart Hut. Hut is a good name. Heart Hut. No, that sounds too. Heart that sounds, Hut. That shit Heart sounds Hut too. Like, yeah, that shit sounds too uh, lowbrow. That sounds like a that sounds like a joint you serve chicken out of. Heart Hut. I tried a fucking vegan pizza once at a festival. Like one of them, uh, where they have like a bunch of like, you know, music acts and shit like that. That shit pissed me off. Uh huh. Huh. It was like cauliflower yeah. crust or some shit. I should have threw that shit away. That would, I still think about I that. I agree with pizza. you. I went to, uh, um, uh, Earth ending, like not Earth ending, but, you know, a world summit about climate change. And of course, they didn't have real meat there because, Meat is part of the cause of climate change. Call a cow's farting and shit. Yeah. And we went downstairs at the end of one of the sessions and we haven't eaten in five, six hours. And then they serve us maybe some of the best looking tacos I've ever seen. And I bit into it and it was the worst tasting taco I've ever had. It was the best looking taco I've ever seen, but the worst tasting taco I've ever seen, I've ever had. And it's just nothing was right, man. It's just nothing was right. It's just, I don't know, man. That's the quickest way to piss me off. It annoys me that I don't, I don't, I want like a good vegan restaurant that like, um. I want, I like, I want to eat vegan shit. I'm not going to stop eating meat, hmm. but I, I do a want good to... spot. I know a good spot. There's four locations. You know what? Actually, I don't know a good spot. I don't know a good spot. <laughs> What change? What in this quick seconds? What the fuck happened? <laughs> I was gonna suggest Hard House. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna suggest Hard House. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Fucked up. R.I.P. R.I.P. Hard House. Hardly knew ye. This has been another episode of It's Too Early for All That. If the if if your mind is too loud, go outside and quiet it a little bit. It's hot out there. <laughs>